Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Throughout the warm weather months, Vermonters, as well as visitors to the state, spend a lot of time in and on our lakes and rivers. In recent years, some of those waterways have dealt with problems like phosphorus overloads and blue-green algae outbreaks. And those problems not only cause environmental issues, they can also lead to health issues for swimmers. To begin our program, Rebecca Gollin takes us to one of Vermont's most troubled lakes and shows us a new project that aims to curb pollution at the source. This is Lake Carmi State Park in Franklin, Vermont. This park was developed in the 1960s. Uh, it's a 480 acre park uh, with about two miles of direct shoreline on Lake Carmi itself. Rob Peterson oversees the state parks in the northwest region of Vermont, including this one. This is the state's largest state park campground. Uh, so we have a total of 175 sites combined between tent sites, cabins, and lean-tos. Uh, every summer we see over 30,000 people visit this park. Uh, it's the second uh, busiest state park campground in the state. And with all of those people comes a lot of waste. Over there we have a new constructed wetland and it's called a constructed wetland, but it, it could be called a pond or it could be called the new lagoon. Civil engineer David Whitney was part of the team behind this constructed wetland. It's a new way for the campground to treat its wastewater. So the shallow end with aeration is going to be colonized with uh, native wetland plant species. And all those plants will evaporate wastewater and uh, the deep end will allow any of the solids and the plant debris that comes off of those plants to be deposited and sink down to the bottom and it mimics a natural um, aquatic ecosystem. Microorganisms at the bottom will feed on the plants and decompose the solids and the water that's left over will evaporate from the lagoon. That will save the park maintenance time and the manpower needed to keep the current system going. A win-win on, on both environmental respects and operational respects. Uh, all the plantings will happen next month. David Webb is an environmental engineer with the Department of Environmental Conservation, or DEC. Even though it was a compliant system and was operating within um, its permit, uh, there was generally a thought that there was a, you know, a better way to do it. And so, and, and this was a perfect site to look at it because of the available area that we had. It was also a perfect site because of Lake Carmi's specific challenges. In 2018, the Vermont House voted overwhelmingly in favor of a bill declaring Carmi a lake in crisis, the first in the state. Phosphorus and nutrient overloads caused repeated blue-green algae outbreaks over the years and made the lake unsafe for swimming, boating, and drinking. According to the DEC, nutrient control projects and required management approaches across all sectors are showing signs of improvement. The wetland project will help, but it's been in the works since before that designation. Once it's fully online, visitors won't even know it's there. I think, honestly, for our visitors, they're not going to notice a, a big difference. They're going to come here, they're going to set up their, their tents, they're going to have a great camping experience. Uh, but behind the scenes, uh, you know, the system will be operating and it will serve, uh, you know, the next five, six uh, decades of, of use at this park. It's in a lot of ways an, a new day for us, but it's going to be uh, the same standard operation that we're used to at this park. It's the first system of its kind in the state, and if all goes well, it won't be the last. There's, you know, a unique solution for every situation. And, you know, with the campground too, it is unique in terms of, you know, their wastewater flow, their usage, when they're open. You know, not every site is the same. Bringing a unique solution to a one-of-a-kind state park and helping the environment at the same time. 
This innovative wastewater system will be working for Vermonters for decades to come. At Lake Carmi State Park, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. Thank you, Rebecca. Joining me now are two guests from the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation. Mary Clark is the department's environmental program manager for large-scale septic systems, and Emily Bodecker is the commissioner of DEC. Thanks so much for coming in. Hello, Judy. Thank Great you. to be here. Yeah, Mary, tell us a little bit about the construction of that wetland system that we saw. Yeah, and uh, it was great to see the ducks in the, in the <laughs> right. water there, in the duckweed. So the, some of the first wetland plants are the duckweed. Um, yeah, it is a, uh, a system that is very similar to a lot of uh, small-scale systems where you have septic tanks, you have pump stations, there's a pretreatment system that is scaled up from a residential size uh, system, and then it goes into a lagoon that uh, and disinfection and uh, spray uh, irrigation. That part of it is not typical for a, a a uh, homeowner, but it is a, a, a standard community type of system. Mm -hmm. So they've added the constructed wetland in order to try to reduce all the discharges into the woods and have it be that it's evaporated and transpired right there in, the, uh, in those two lagoons. And how about location-wise? The lagoons aren't near the water. Right, they're set back. They've been, uh, you know, that area had been constructed many years ago, and uh, so they had like this extra space that was not being used at the time. They had the original lagoon, and so it was easy for them to construct a wetland in the other side there and have have it all set back where people wouldn't normally be seeing any of that. Mm -hmm. And so, how long did it take to build? Well, the uh, the design. Um, and permitting stages went into last summer or f fall. The early fall is when they began the system, mm -hmm. and it's substantially complete right now. Um, of course, there are still some plants that are going to uh, added to it either later this fall or probably again in the spring. And so, how much did it cost? So this uh, this system is a design build type of a system. So Dave Whitney and his company Eco Solutions they um, they have the contract and uh, it is kind of a complex one because it is a new idea for Vermont. So it took a little bit more time in the planning and the mm -hmm. permitting side of things. Um, they're estimating about two hundred fifty thousand dollars for both at this time. Uh -huh. So, Emily, what are some of the benefits and drawbacks of this kind of a system? Well, we're using a lot of proven technologies here, but we're putting them together in an innovative way, and we're really seeking to have this system not require any of the disinfection and the spraying in the woods, as Mary mentioned. So, not only is this a great opportunity for Lake Carmi State Park, there are a number of other properties that the state owns as well that this system could be very viable for. So we're hoping for great success here at Lake Carmi so that we can go above and beyond in this approach in other areas too. Mm -hmm. And so why are septic systems particularly important to Vermont? Well, 55% of all Vermonters, all properties in Vermont, have their own on-site wastewater treatment system. We call them on-site systems or more typically a septic system. So as we're all in for clean water, as you know, rain falls on the ground, it goes into our surface waters, our rivers, our lakes, into groundwater. We access that with our wells. So it's already part of one system. So as we're all in for clean water, we really want to make sure that we think about not only when we're using our own home systems, but when you go to a general store in a small town, Judy, in places where we don't have their own wastewater treatment facility, you're bound to be using other people's septic systems more often than you realize. Mm -hmm. And most people don't even think about a septic system unless it doesn't work. Exactly. Out of sight, out of mind. And there are a lot of really important things that every property owner can do to make sure the systems stay in working order. Particularly important for people who live near rivers and lakes? Definitely, that's very important because there's a much closer access to, to groundwater and to, to surface water. But it's important for everybody to take care of their systems. We actually have required setbacks from any body of water 
be it a stream or a wetland or a lake or a pond, to make sure that we have sufficient distance. And we also have vertical separation requirements. So maybe you have an in-ground system, or maybe you need to build a mound so you keep sufficient separation between where the treatment is occurring and where we actually reach groundwater. And so what is the, the state's role in permitting these systems? Well, we permit about 2,500 systems a year. We actually have five regional offices, which are in Springfield, Rutland, Montpelier, Essex Junction, and St. Johnsbury, where homeowners and property owners go to get a permit for their on-site system. Now, however, if your system uses more than 6,499 gallons per day, then you'll get a necessary environment for them to thrive, and they do all the work for us. If you're just joining us, I'm in the studio with two key members of the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation. Uh, Emily, tell us a little bit about uh, today is the start of a septic smart week. What is that? It is. Well, we have, you know, fabulous septic Sam here who's mm -hmm. helping us. Um, the EPA runs this program. We in Vermont are one of the partners, as are the many folks who operate the septic systems here. And it's really to bring awareness to the fact that many Vermonters have these systems. We'll be doing blog posts and social media posts to help people understand how to take care of their own system and those of others that we use. And there are fabulous things like little fridge magnets, the cloggers and the killers mm -hmm. that shouldn't go into systems. There's also going to be the third annual septic um, workshop that's happening. This is going to be at the Heartland Public Library at 9.30 a.m. on Saturday the 22nd. And this is run by the Connecticut Rivers Joint Commission and the Black River Action Team. So you can actually go onto our website, which is septic.vermont.gov, or visit the, the, the Connecticut River Joint Commission and sign up for that workshop. Mm -hmm. Now these are important uh, topics because there are a lot of things that you should not be putting in your mm -hmm. septic system. Absolutely. We always need to think of it as a system of bugs. And I love the description that whether it's an on-site system or a larger off-site, it's a bug farm. Mm -hmm. So if you think about something that might be detrimental to bugs, um, if you're putting larger materials down there, if you're putting a cleaning product or paint, that's definitely a no-no. You could believe right. that a bug would not thrive in that environment, and we need these bugs to be healthy so they can process the waste materials, just as Mary referenced the processing will be happening in the lagoon and the wetland system at the park as well. Mm -hmm. So we think about it really as a living system. That will help us realize what products should not be put down the sink and should be disposed of in the many other ways that are available to Vermonters. Mm -hmm. And Mary, I know we started out the program talking about the big lagoon system that's in place at Lake Carmi State Park. Other state parks interested in doing something similar? Yes, um, I think that was another part of why the state park...